What is improvisation? This is a question that doesn't really get asked much because we just assume that everyone agrees on what improvisation is. When you're a student, you'll likely be asked to improvise before anyone gives you a clear definition of what that really means. So it's understandable that many people are confused about what they're supposed to do exactly when it comes time to improvise. I'm going to give you the most clear definition of what improvisation is. This is information that would have really accelerated my own progress had I known it starting out. So pay attention, you'll be glad you did. Let's begin with what improvisation is not. Musical improvisation is not just making stuff up to play. Even though you may have been told this at some point, just make something up. It is certainly not just randomly wiggling your fingers, and it is not just a matter of playing the right notes over the corresponding chord changes. Wait, what? That's what I've been told a thousand times. Play the right scales and arpeggios over the chords. Now you're telling me that's not it? Yes, sorry to tell you this, but playing the right notes, scales, arpeggios over chord changes is technically improvising, but it's not the improvisation you're looking for or what you've been hearing on the records. Musical improvisation in any style is a language and just like like a spoken language, it's not enough to just string words together that are following the rules of grammar. For example, look up to Millennial Rumble Glasses miniature book. That's a sentence I made up using random words and objects I can see on my desk, and it's meaningless. If I were to communicate using phrases like that one, it would be boring and weird. Nobody would pay attention to what I was saying, nor would they remember anything I said. Even though I followed the rules of grammar and spoke clearly, it doesn't work. When you are improvising, if you merely follow the rules and play the correct notes over the chords, you'll get the same results. What you play will sound boring, nobody will pay attention to you, and nobody will remember what you played. When you hear great musical improvisers, it's important to understand that they are not just making stuff up that follows the rules of harmony. Good improvisation sounds good to us when it has familiar patterns and phrases that we can recognize as a musical language. There are ways of speaking musically that are universally understood by everyone. The language and vocabulary of the blues, for example, is universal. Everyone, wherever you go, knows what you're saying when you speak the language of the blues. Simple diatonic melodies like the ones found in nursery rhymes and popular music are also universally understood. There are types of music that use more sophisticated language and vocabulary and therefore aren't as easily accessible or understood by the masses. Take bebop or some modern classical music for examples. These require a more developed ear in the same way that some poets and writers might be more difficult to get into and read. So musical improvisation is speaking a language. When you improvise, you want to be communicating using vocabulary that your audience understands. There are infinite ways to do this, and in the process, you're going to be showing off your beautiful sound, your technique, your sense of rhythm, and your creativity. But how do I learn this vocabulary you're talking about? I'm glad you asked this. You learn it the same way you learned the vocabulary you use to speak. You learn it by listening and mimicking what you hear. In music, we have a wonderful freedom to pick and choose the vocabulary we want to adopt as our own. For you, that might be the blues or bebop or baroque 
counterpoint, or a combination of all of the above. The musical vocabulary you choose to communicate and improvise with will be familiar with your audience and at the same time unique to you. This musical vocabulary can come from anywhere you choose. Just start by learning music that is meaningful to you. Here's an exercise everyone should do starting today. I want you to think of the music that made you want to become a musician. It could be a particular song, an artist, a whole album. It could be the theme song to your favorite TV show. Doesn't matter. Go find that recording and start learning that music by ear. It might take you an hour, a day, a week, a month. Doesn't matter. Once you learn that music by ear, you gain ownership of it. It's like when you learn new words in a spoken language. You have to use those in real life situations in order to gain ownership of those new words and add them to your vocabulary. Once you begin to gain ownership of the music that inspires you the most, that's when you start building your own personal vocabulary and begin to understand what improvisation actually is. This is precisely why improvising musicians all transcribe solos from their favorite musicians. This is the process that all improvisers go through to learn the craft. If we never listen to the musicians who came before us and mimic what they played, then we can never learn to speak the musical language in any style of music. Just like when you're a toddler, if you don't listen to what your parents are saying to you and mimic those sounds, you'll never learn to speak. Whatever you decide to say is entirely up to you. There is a very uninformed argument that criticizes this way of learning to improvise. You may have even heard it at school. I know I heard as a young musician that good improvisation meant never playing the same thing twice and not sounding like anyone else. That's quite literally the opposite of what good improvisation is. The reason you can recognize your favorite improvisers when they're playing is because they consistently speak with their own personal vocabulary. That repetition is essential. It is impossible to sound exactly like someone else when improvising, even if that were your mission and I've never met another musician who aspired to be a carbon copy of someone else, you couldn't do it. We all have our own unique voice, and that voice comes through in the end, no matter what. Here's a quick summary for you. Improvisation is communicating in an established musical language. Yes, you do need to learn your rules of grammar that are the scales and arpeggios and chord progressions and rhythms, stuff like that. But just like with spoken language, if you want to say something meaningful, you have to communicate using vocabulary and phrases that are familiar to your audience. Learning to improvise is done through the process of listening and mimicking the musicians you love. Through this process, over time, you develop your own unique voice. Learning to improvise is one of the great joys in life. And if you wanna learn more about how I can help you along in this process, please visit me at bettersax.com where we have tons of resources for players at all levels. Now I've broken down this process of learning to improvise into a seven part framework. Go watch this video next for a step-by-step -step guide to exactly what you should do to learn to improvise from the beginning.